Indeed, I can hear uh, the, he <laughs> the booming voice of the uh, co-broadcaster, of course, of Hour 3 on Friday. Of course, you have your own show, the uh, LibertyMan.com is your website, and Ann Morrison, your co-host, scientist. Uh, John, uh, tell us the latest what's happening. You have some of the best research teams, uh, whistleblowers I've known anywhere, and you've had stories that we've had repeatedly on the show. Some people have tried to uh, say that uh, your sources are not correct, and every time... I have found your research and your ability to sniff out, if you want to call it the truth, is smack on ahead of everybody else I've... Uh, well, thank you, Doctor. I've, 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 I've gained quite a reputation as a homicide detective for those very reasons. Re anyway, um, the uh, anti-gun legislation, uh, the consensus seems to be it's just simply nothing serious anyway uh, of any great consequence can get through both houses of Congress. Which leaves us with uh, executive orders, which they, he, there's not, not much he can do if Congress uh, shows them stiff upper lip, because once they're published in the Federal Register, the Congress can null and void them in 30 days. Which right. leaves United Nations treaties. Now, that's the real danger, in my opinion. United Nations treaties uh, will give the appearance of uh, validity, even though, in my opinion, many legal all, scholars, yeah. Uh, yeah. any any treaty that Including is the Supreme Court. Precisely. Any treaty that's sideways and does not comport with our Constitution, uh, many people, including myself, uh, feel no obligation to uh, pay homage to. So uh, the uh, United Nations treaties uh, are something we need to be paying careful attention to. Of course, uh, the U.S. Senate has to validate the treaty if and when the president would sign such a thing. And uh, many of these uh, senators, they may think that that's something they can get away with, is uh, signing on board to uh, uh, go ahead and be part of a United Nations treaty. So I, I think we all need exactly. to be aware of that, along with, of course, the economy, the economy, the economy, the economy. Um, Everybody I know who's paying attention is very concerned with what's going on with our economy. Every prognosticator, both professional and non-professional, are very concerned with the state well, of our I, economy and the dollar three, itself being at risk. Let me give a, a, a three-step uh, plan to fix the economy. Uh, number one, you, have, you don't have to have a constitutional convention. You have a convention of the state governors. And, in fact, we can start off with is just the Republican governors, which are by far the large majority of the governors. What they do is they make a recommendation among the states that they want to take over from the Federal Reserve the banking authority and they put it totally under the control of the state-controlled authority, not the federal government, the states. Then they set up state banks in every state. They nullify the debt at the same time they set up Glass-Steagall to put a firewall between the speculative banking and the two big-to-fail banks. Uh, and they do that uh, parallel with countervailing tariffs against products coming into the country uh, and illegal traffic coming in, like the uh, trade of the containers coming in from China and through Mexico, through Via Cardenas and the super ports. And then in instantly, instantly, all of the transnational, base, many of the U.S.-based corporations that have moved business to Indonesia and China and elsewhere would say, oh my gosh, there's no business or bean counter reason to build this in India or China right. because of countervailing tariffs, etc. And our energy policy needs to immediately become energy independence, not in five or ten years, but in two. Two years is all we need to get energy independent. Finish the XL pipeline, authorize the building of new refineries across America. They haven't had a new refinery since 1975. That's obscene. It is obscene. Secondly, we, we need to also stop stupid hydrofracking where it's not necessary and authorized that it has to be a standardization of hydrofracking technology. In fact, I've got a magazine here when uh, I want to get Anne on later because she's quite on the hydrofracking as well. There are safe technologies for extracting oil and gas from the ground and gas by coal, but there's unsafe and stupid ones. And putting chemicals down in hydrofracking areas where you're going to pull a water table away from the roots of trees and destroy crop land, etc., is the stupidest damn thing I ever heard. 
Well, I agree, okay. and, and there has to be a safe way to do the hydrofracking, hydrofracking with, with, while, while causing no harm, and obviously they need to be. Yeah, done I can that. tell them what to. I, I can tell them what they need to do because I'm a chemist as well. And the first thing they need to do is they should never frack where it's near the water table. Uh, the report I have from National Geographic I have right in front of me says America strikes oil, and they're saying it's down at least seven uh, Empire State State buildings, 1,454 feet down. And they say they put steel jackets. But right here, they have a number of concerns. They talk about air quality, leaking ponds, faulty wells, and spills. Well, well, guess what? The worst of those that they don't mention is the use of chemicals. You can use microwave technology. You can use what's called infrasound technology to break up oil uh, into the right micro droplets. You can use high pressure super steam. Which is not regular steam. This is super steam. That's see, and you can put infuse into that super steam things like helium and other gases. That's why, for example, most people don't realize the major source of helium, which is why Europe didn't have helium, America did, is from the wells in Texas. Helium is naturally a cofactor with deep well drilling, and if you put helium down there and these other gases, argon, you actually break up and make it easier for the internal viscosity to get that oil out of the ground without using chemicals. You can't use chemicals near farmland. You can't have, you know, settling pools and air quality. The places in Walsenburg, uh, Colorado, they actually had so much gas coming out of the ground, you could turn on your tap and then light it. So your right. tap water would actually come out and have a flame. That is beyond stupid. And we need to be energy independent, but we need to not be stupid. That's what we call stupid on steroids. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dr. Bill. Well, the, the world remains a dangerous place, and we need to remind people that they need to get prepared now so they don't have to live a life of fear and anguish. They can live a, a life where they have hope and, and, a, and a life of joy, which is how we yeah. all should be living. Uh, you and I both get the, these uh, calls and emails uh, looking for dates and timetables. If you're prepared, you don't need to worry about a date or a yeah, timetable. Yeah, you know, you really we're, we're one day closer, one week closer since last, last week. What I tell people is, I call it the two rule. Be ready for two weeks food, water, and shelter. Be ready to hunker down up to two months. After two months, you need to be ready to move your butt to a community far enough away, at least one gas take away from any large city. At the end of six months, 90% of the population in the Western world will be dead through violence, uh, starvation, disease, or cannibalism. Absolutely. That's the reality. That's why people don't understand this. They think I'm exaggerating. I work in trauma. I work with the government on Operation Top Off and FEMA, etc. I know firsthand with their own operational plans and war game plans exactly. And these are not, you know, these are sober people. They're not crazy. So you have to understand the government aren't all bad people. They're people that are what are called sober. Just like the generals are sober, they don't plan to go into a war unless they really want to put their assets and people in danger. And there's a real good reason for it. That's why you'll see Obama, who was never in the military, do stupid uh, actions like these drone strikes or, but because he's never been in the military. If you had a gen generals there that have two clues and aren't a monster, they're not going to do stupid things unless there's a, uh, a you know asset-based benefit ratio that, that makes it sensible to put people in harm's way because you're going to get dead people, dismembered people, and damaged people, damaged property, and killed civilians on both sides. So we got to stop and think before we do anything, and we don't have very much of that lately, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. And uh, uh, there's not much difference uh, operationally between what a modern drone can do and what a World War II uh, fighter could do. They're aircraft, and they drop munitions. <laughs> the only, right. only thing is that the brain operating a World War II fighter is in the cockpit, where the brain operating a drone might be in Nebraska or, or someplace. Yeah, but otherwise, I, 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 otherwise, there's no difference. You know, these are aircraft yeah, the, that kill people. Yeah, in fact, one of the big drone uh, centers is up in uh, Reno, Nevada. There's another one in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and they're getting all kinds of, I call drone stars. They get special stars for being really good top guns with their drone. These weapon systems, by the way, are mind-boggling. People don't understand just how advanced they are. They can lock onto you within a meter, hit you with a Hellfire missile 75 miles away, from GPS coordinates. You can't even hear the drone. It's over the horizon. And you could be sitting in your T-80 Russian tank and eating your uh, borscht and having uh, some Russian sausage, and you have no idea that four seconds later an appointment was arranged for you to see... Well, Dr. Bell, uh, I'm going to hand off here to you and Ann, and I'm going to get going here. Thanks a lot, uh, John. Any new major reports, drop in any time. We'll, we'll do an emergency okay. report. And again, listen to The Liberty Man. Go to libertyman.com, get all the connections, and major announcements coming up in the next week or so. Uh, and uh, we'll be back in a second to hear your latest reports on a number of important 
space weather and other issues. And joining us also, Alexander Bachman. Back in a moment. And I'm going to do a, a series of, of, of articles I'm going to post up and research on hydrofracking. Uh, I'm amazed that they got away with this crap. And, of course, one thing, and believe it or not, by default, one of the few good things that Obama did is he wouldn't allow hydrofracking on, on federal lands. What really needs to happen is you need to have a cross-the-board regulation uh, to make sure hydrofracking doesn't affect uh, water tables, that procedures are much tighter, just like double-hauled ships. Uh, years ago, I talked to one of my friends who was an oil engineer. Double-hauled ships should have been made standard, so the Exxon Valdez didn't happen off of Alaska. And uh, once we improve procedures, everything's a go. You use microwave technology, you use these gases like helium and argon, you use uh, technology such as harmonic subsonic uh, sound to break up oil droplets. Do not use ever chemicals. Make sure you don't end up with bubbling up gas coming out of the ground so you've got air quality problems, leaking pipes, faulty wells or spills or settling ponds where you've got all kinds of craziness happening. Um, we don't want to destroy the, the biology in the place, and I think it won't take a generation. And these areas of the Midwest, of the, the literally grain belt of the United States, will be absolutely, totally fracked, if you want to call it. <laughs> Very good term for it. They'll be fracked to pieces. Well, I agree what, with what you. What do you think? I, I think that we need to take a good, strong look at that. I've been looking at it from a, a viewpoint of the water use. They use a tremendous amount of groundwater, and that groundwater is what feeds our public water supplies. And uh, when they pull it down to the, the aquifer, uh, they introduce uh, hazards, chemical hazards, into that because they have drilling mud and stuff. And so not only, so they're contaminating the water that we use, the drinking water, and they're, uh, they're, uh, the supply of drinking water is going down. And that was one of the reasons that we had, that the drought was so significant last year was because we had no, we had no uh, groundwater. You know, the groundwater was five. Well, they, they're also not recharging the Algalala Reserve. We know how many years are left, so that's why when we talked about with the Lewis Foundation recharging the Ogallala Reserve with water from the Columbia River Basin. But we also have to be sure that the Snake River and the Columbia River Basin goes through some of the most radioactive soils and runoff areas in the world uh, from Hanford Reactor. And uh, Columbia right now is dumping into the Pacific Ocean. It's not just Fukushima that's screwing out the Pacific. It's the Hanford Reactor sites on the Columbia River. So no one is talking, you know. I, I, I raise questions because I know about these things from the inside track, but nobody's talking about the fact that we've got to make certain that we preserve our water and we re-engineer the water so we recharge these aquifers so we don't run out of water. And, in, and when they're running it even faster using hydrofracking, this is beyond stupid. This is stupid on steroids. As, as uh, you know, Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does. Well, I think it's greed on the part of the oil companies. Yeah, but it's only beyond even greed. This is this is evil. I mean, greed is one thing, you know. Use procedures that'll make you money, but you know, not screw up the environment. Eventually, you get pissed off local constituents to say, "Hey, I can't turn on my tap because I can get a fire or an explosion in the house from gas." <laughs> it's one thing to have a gas explosion in your house; it's another to turn on the tap and someone decides to light up and have a cigarette, and then they have an explosion in the kitchen. Bad yeah. idea. Bad idea. And we've seen yeah. lots of instances of that where fracking has gone on, where people ha can light the water that's coming out of their faucets. They have it up on YouTube, and they even have it in yeah, the Yeah, in Wal Walsenburg, Colorado. And I, I've been through Walsenburg before. And I, I know the area. It's like, you got to be kidding. <coughs> Too many uh, oil companies up there? What do you mean you got to be kidding? Well, no, I'm kidding that they would actually do this. They're not using proper techniques. The people got so ticked off, they actually shut it all down because the local politicians said, oh, my God, there are all the constituents up in arms because the gas is coming up through everywhere. You can smell the sulfury smell everywhere. Everybody's host had gas coming through their water pipes. Everybody. It was just insane. Walsenburg, uh, Colorado. Well, it's Near Pueblo. Else, yeah, it's happening elsewhere in the country now where they're, where they're doing uh, uh, fracking, hydrofracking. And yeah, it's not just that. I mean, they can do high, go coal gasification. There's one gold se coal seam in a uh, in a national park that you don't even have to go near. You could actually run a lateral line to that area and coal gasify, 
and create coal, gasified coal. There's all kinds of natural gas off Alaska and elsewhere. There's areas where you could hydrofrack if you're using microwave and these gas technologies, which are easy to implement. They should never be using chemicals, and they should use all kinds of double backup systems so you never have to worry about a, a pipe breaking or a well leaking or gas coming up through the ground for centuries or forever. This is just ridiculous. Yeah, the groundwater got so low here last summer that the trees stopped transpiring, and that meant that the roots didn't reach the water table. And uh, when that happens, the trees die. They don't put water back in the air, so when the cold fronts would come through, we wouldn't get any rain because so, there was not enough so water. Not, it was like a desert. So, so the powers that be not only want to impoverish us and destroy our dollar by spending money like a drunken sailor and borrow from the Chinese and setting up 257 trade zones that are, have imminent domain on American soil, they want to make it look devastation like a B movie post Armageddon. Well, then, it's ridiculous. You look at you look at Arizona, and that's what's going to happen across the entire Midwest. Arizona now has the Arizonization of America. Yeah, there you go. That's that's exactly the right. The desertification of America. Yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid, and it doesn't need to be at all. We need to be recharging, and we need to actually be a positive influence in the ecosystems of the planet. We need to preserve species. We need to preserve ecosystems. We need to make sure there's enough water distributed. We need to make sure that water's not radioactive. We need to seal off Hanford reactor so it doesn't get in the Columbia River Basin. We need to seal off the, uh, the Schwarzman mine so the radioactive mine which runs down into the Grand Lake Reservoir system is not slowly feeding the people of, of Denver, Colorado and surrounding areas like Broomfield, uh, etc. with radioactive water. It is not acceptable. And I'll tell you what happened is after the, we brought people up there to out the Schwarzman mine and after we did some test with Nova, which is an environmental company. My boss was uh, Reserve Admiral John Hughes, his environmental director, one of the, you know, grandfathered in uh, occupational guys. <laughs> he had all kinds of contracts with the government. Uh, they freaked out when all the guys that went on there, I had to do all their exit exams because John was away. And uh, the guys went, weren't on hazmat suits for radiation. The radiation level when they did groundwater and other sampling was 10,000 times more radioactive and they were letting people hike around the area without proper even fencing up. It's just beyond stupid. And the public's completely oh, unaware because they can't see it and they think everything's fine. These workers went out there because they gave them a contract to say, you go out there and do sampling to check the clay in the water and see where it's in the granite under base and see where the water is heading toward the North Platte River. And when we get the results back, I saw some very freaked out environmental scientists who went out there and said, I should have been wearing a rad suit. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, this is crazy. So, you know, we don't want to have America, not the beautiful, but the America, the radioactive, the America, the dead, you know? Well, we are seeing more birth defects, and, and there is an increase in miscarriages. And now, did you see the last report on cancer in younger women? Uh, there's a aggressive type of cancer that's attacking women in their 30s and 40s. Uh, is it a breast cancer? Time. What kind of cancer? What kind of brand oh, of cancer? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a breast cancer, and they have no explanation okay. for this. Well, I'll give you a couple possibilities. The first is cesium 137. They did the hamster studies years ago, and guess what? Cesium 137 goes directly, like a like a laser, directly to the breast tissue. If you want to cause breast cancer in small mammals and in humans, give them cesium 137, and it goes directly to the breast because it's an analog of calcium, which the breast concentrate. And it's a, a genotoxin and causes genetic malformation of millions of cells in parallel. You've heard about or even used colloidal silver for years. But did you know there's a silver product that is much better, faster, safer, and superior? Silver that is fundamentally distinctive, different, and the only patented silver since the original colloidal silver in 1923? Introducing Silver Protocol from Neofera. Think about this. What will you do when you can't get antibiotics? Silver Protocol should be in every grab bag. The one product you got to have when it all breaks loose. Unlike colloidal silver, use Silver Protocol preventatively or whenever infection occurs. Silver Protocol can be boiled or frozen, yet is still 100% effective. Has super long shelf life and will not cause argyria or turn you blue. Order Silver Protocol at 800-213-0644. That's 800-213-0644. Or go to neofera.com, spelled N-E-O-F. FERA.com. Sign up for our free educational email series at neofera.com. Silver Protocol, the ultimate immune booster. 
You land in Buenos Aires, then are shuttled to Santa Rosa, where a nicely furnished cabin with all amenities, Wi-Fi, executive food and wine, and laundry service awaits. After a good night's sleep, your adventure begins. You're on a golden stag safari for big game. But it's not Africa. It's Argentina. One-on-one guided hunts for water buffalo, cougar, bighorn rams, wild boar, and the biggest stag deer in South America. All gold medal quality. All the action you can handle. Land Rovers, top rental guns with scopes, all food, beverages, hunting guides, ground transportation included, and more, all more affordable than you can imagine. The adventure of a lifetime starts at GoldenStagSafaris.com, the big game hunting ranch, GoldenStagSafaris.com. Now there's an amazing new natural antibiotic every person must have. It's Cells Alive Silver Solution, and it destroys over 650 hard-to-kill viruses, fungus, bacteria, and much more. Cells Alive Silver Solution has no expiration date, is great for emergency kits and storage shelters, and comes in 8 or 16-ounce bottles. Order today at 888-910-4367 or visit HempUSA.org. HempUSA.org, 100% chemical-free superfoods and unique health products. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Don't throw away leftovers. Instead, throw all your leftovers, vegetable peels, eggshells, coffee grounds, pizza crusts, and more into the Bokashi. If you love to garden and compost but don't like the hassle of turning a compost bin or the smell, then check out the EM Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System from Terra Organics. Finally, a way to recycle all your food and plant waste safely and effectively and stop using fertilizers. The EM Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System. Rather than decomposition, the Bokashi system uses fermentation to break down waste, so it takes less time to create nutrients dense humus for crops or gardens with no turning and no obnoxious odors. To learn more and order your Bokashi online, visit Terraganics.com and click on the orange button. That's Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com or call 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Recycle all your food wastes in about six weeks with the Bokashi Food Waste Recycling System from Terraganics.com. Terraganics, life's getting better. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Welcome back, and uh, and you just have a, an, an emergency report that just came out here on a volcano in Peru. Talk about this for a minute, because it tells us that we're not isolated. It's a small Earth, space weather, and we have three major comets that are going to be coming and crossing to the inner heliosphere. The one in October is early as close to 700,000 miles over the surface of the sun to the inner heliosphere. We're going to have superstorms in the sun, if any of them are pointed at us. But this volcano, just like Mount St. Helens, and people don't know the explosive force, Mount St. Helens was more explosive power than all the nuclear weapons ever developed in history in every country. That's how powerful it was. And the explosion down here that happened back in, uh, I think you said 1990, of this uh, Sabacayo volcano in Peru, uh, yeah. this is now getting very active again on February 27th. Tell us the update on this, because these volcanoes and, and earthquakes and so on are getting very active. you got a new report on new tectonic plates as well that are developing uh, the Earth is in what I call convulsions. It's literally the birth pangs of Mother Earth ready to go through some birthing here shortly. Yeah, and we can also talk about the uh, magnetic pole, the North Magnetic Pole, which is uh, running to into Siberia from Alaska. Yeah. Okay, right. this 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 volcano is, has just become active this last week, and it 
The last time it was active, it was on May 28th, 1990. So you're talking um, 13 years, 13 years, uh, 20, 20, 23 years. years. <laughs> and it, it, it erupted with a VEI. Now, that's a volcanic explosive index of three. And uh, that, is, that is serious. Uh, you think that would cause a, uh, a, a volcanic mm. winter? Uh, yes. Yeah. Volcanic. Yeah. Volcanic winter after Mount St. Helens, two or three years were cooler than usual. Then it popped up again. Uh, but yeah, it can cause volcanic winter. It also it does several other things. Firstly, uh, it changes weather patterns so that the weather is different. You get fluctuations, and if rain doesn't occur in growing areas of food, then it also can cause floods in some areas and droughts in others because it moves the weather patterns in the jet stream. And this is just at the equator, so it's not, you know, it, it could affect the northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere. Uh, 8,000 people could be uh, affected by pyroclastic flows, and we've talked about pyroclastic flows before. If you watch the yeah. uh, DVD Super Volcano, it just comes alive for you that you can't, un you can't outrun a pyroclastic flow, and it... It, it's very hot and it kills you. Yeah. You know, it just burns your, your lungs. It, it, it burns your lungs and peels your skin like a banana. And then uh, it's also um, putting out poisonous uh, volcanic organic gases, and uh, those that, that's called fog. And uh, they do track those. And, uh, By the way, the, the, the largest uh, fog generating volcano on Earth is guess where? The big island uh, of Hawaii. And if you actually look at the poison index in terms of sulfur dioxide, the highest concentration of any city on Earth is, guess where? The big island of Hawaii. Bigger than any other city, including the major super cities of 25 million. The largest VOG index is on the big island of Hawaii because of the uh, Kilauea volcano. That volcano is so active and so much uh, sulfur dioxide coming out, the VOG index is off the roof. It's ridiculous. And they're also showing a hot spot at the Popocatapetl volcano, which is just south of uh, Mexico City, south uh, uh -huh. east of Mexico City, yeah. and it is yeah. and it's emitting a uh, sulfur dioxide plume. Now you had to know some more about that, uh, Alexander. So pop in and tell us what's happening at Popocatapetl because some real bad well, things happened in the past. Well, Popocatépetl is active because, uh, well, if you go to the spiritual aspect, uh, you know, these volcanoes have uh, demonic activity all around them and inside them, but that that laid aside... Popocatepetl yeah, you're talking about the trans-dimensional aspect of the... Uh, you're talking about the trans-dimensional aspect of the, of the space there, because people don't realize there's a... If the best way to think of reality is it's layers of, of, of physical reality laid on spiritual reality. And so it's a multi-layered, polydimensional uh, reality. And Precisely. So we're referring, to, yeah. But I do recommend that if you go to alexanderbachman.com uh, on the main page, you'll see a download section uh, that I'm starting, and you'll see there a series of PDF files that everybody should be interested in reading and downloading. Uh, and taking a read of them, uh, it's about volcanic activity around the world and the coming out of terrible things that are uh, envisioned in the book of uh, Revelations, chapter nine. These locusts that come from under the earth, the Nephilim returning, the giants awakening, and all that stuff. So this is probably connected. Now, Popocatépetl, or the Popo, as they call it, is a very active volcano, but it's connected to the Isla Cihuatl, which is the, the sleeping lady, they call it, right beside it. Now, this is exactly a 19.47 degrees uh, on the planet. So it's exactly the meridian of the, we would say, at the same level as the pyramids in Cydonia, if we follow the hyperdimensional uh, and uh, toroidal physics aspect of all this flux of energy flowing through all the planets exactly at those meridians, uh, either in the northern hemisphere or lo uh, southern hemisphere, like the big giant spot on Jupiter, all this is tied in and interconnected with a flux of energy that probably comes directly from the sun and probably from other suns and probably eventually from the center of the galaxy. But what yeah, we yeah, do actually, know... Let, let me fill in something there. What people need to understand, the planets and the stars were created because the torsion field, which is the fifth dimensional field, existed before the mass agglomerated to form planets and stars. It didn't now, just appear out of a gas cloud. The yeah. Higgs field, which we talk about, is what's called the torsion field. It literally generated the gravitonic force that agglomerated the matter, but in fact the Higgs field existed before the gravity existed. And that means the curved time space 
was present because black holes in the center of the galaxy pumped that energy and mass through wormholes like a Christmas tree out to white holes where mass and energy reemerges as stars and planets. Now, what we do know about the Popocatépetl is that the Popo is the biggest geomagnetic uh, center right now on planet Earth. All right, so it's very, very important. Uh, the location it has it has the same location as uh, Kilauea over there in Hawaii. So it's not a coincidence that if you follow that 19.47 uh, latitude all around the world, you'll see you know where it intersects, and you'll see all this activity especially along that, that region and down towards the equator, bulging of the equator, especially in Indonesia right now with the yep. new tectonic plate forming under the ocean, and Anne can speak about that in a minute. But yep. just, just to finish my comment, um, I spoke with Speaking Wind. Speaking Wind was a uh, uh, Lakota Indian. He died. He was killed by the Illuminati in the 90s. But Speaking Wind clearly said that there's a very ancient prophecy that under Mexico City, the valley that holds the city of Mexico City is in reality a super volcano. And these Popo volcanoes and uh, the Isla Cihuat and all these, all the transversal uh, volcanic chain is really in reality part of a super mega volcanic chain that when it ignites, uh, they know it will ignite another super volcano, which is up in Mount Rainier, and then that would trigger the entire ring of fire. So wow. I think we're in the beginning stages of birth banks, uh, very strong birth banks. Yeah, exactly. I think Amazing. it's going to blow. Uh, you know, there's going to be a moment where we're going to say, okay, it's the end of days. Why? Because all the volcanoes are just uh, erupting all around the world. And this is because, um, according to some sources, uh, and I, I, I tend to subscribe to these ideas. Uh, we have an anomalous situation that's affecting our sun and affecting our solar system, and it's getting, uh, it's going on the increase. We're having more seismic activity than normal. Just the Santa Cruz Islands and the entire region there in the South Pacific right now is, it's really active. So we have to pay attention to all of that. Yeah, yeah, amazing, isn't it? So um, the the other thing I wanted to mention too is that. Uh, a lot of times people think that this is otherworldly when they listen to some of the things we talk about. But what they have to understand is we're trying to translate in simple terms because in a sense, it's like taking kindergartners into a PhD physics classroom. It's real and it's real science, but you have to understand that the regular news isn't going to cover this. The universities are not going to expose you to what's called tier one science or tier one spirituality. And as a result, you're not going to get this in your regular church, university, or newspaper, or whatever. You're going to hear it on this program. You're going to see it on Alexander's website, on Homeland-Defense uh, for You, and, and the LibertyMan.com, and ClayandIron.com. Come back and um, Alexander. I know that uh, we we we, we uh, have some. I have what I call super and maybe unrealistic, optimistic views about what I expect to happen. Uh, it's a matter of, of pinching. Uh, when we're doing surgery, one of the things we do when we put people under light anesthesia, and I remember I did orthopedics, plastics, and other surgeries, is we would pinch with our little you know uh, drape tongs to see if people were awake or not. You know, are they deep enough in anesthetic we can start cutting? And uh, what I would say is the population are still twitching when we use the drape, drape tongs on them because they haven't had enough pain yet. They can still go get a burger. They can still use their credit card, and they can still put gas in their car, all even though it's getting real damned expensive. What happens after things get ugly? In other words, we get a downgrading rating. We get a 20 or 30% increase in the cost of food and gasoline. And then we have really getting hit by taxes because the Democrats and this maniac Obama want to tax to death because it's basically chaos by design. I talked to a gentleman this morning who was an expert uh, and a therapist, and he's in the 60s, and he said he had nightmares all night just thinking. And, you know, he's a therapist. He should know. <laughs> he, he has justifiable reasons to think. I'm in my 60s, and when I read Obamacare, he says it's, it's organized and, and willful chaos. It's designed to kill people. Now, people might say that's a conspiracy theory. I was asked by ConspiracyCon to speak as the expert on Obamacare. I said, look, I'm going to direct you to people that are, that are more knowledgeable in this, such as Daniel Weber from AMAC 
and Dr. Adam Doran from the America's Medical Association and experts at our Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, AEPS, uh, people uh, uh, in the organization. What, what they have to understand is this is my timeline, what I expect to happen. The sequester well, isn't going to get fixed. but and So, in other words, it's going to $85 billion, even though these Democrat and Republican senators are bellyaching, is going to go under. So, in other words, it's not going to hurt anything. It's two cents in the dollar, as we uh, said earlier this week when we had on Phyllis Schlafly on Tuesday, first hour. Well, the Secondly, U.S. Thing- the, the, let, let yeah. me finish. The, the second thing is the debt limit isn't going to get fixed because the, the Obama is spending like a drunken maniac, and it's designed to blow the dollar out. As much as the Republicans haven't had their act together, they realize they should start like a bloodhound sniffing the blood of now taking over the Senate because blood's in the water, okay? So the sharks are collecting. There's seven senatorial seats in places where they're trying to gun grab. The chances of them getting a, a bill through Congress and the Senate are zero. The chances of idiots, like when the past Governor Cuomo passed this law in, in the state of New York to try to seize guns of veterans at 2 and 3 in the morning, and I've stated this before. I've, by the way, I've not had any visits from any government agents or anybody else to threaten Dr. Deagle, and you better damn well not do it. Well, okay, you know, because here's what's going to happen. Wait, if wait, they wait, attack our veterans at 3 in the morning, it'll be like throwing a ham sandwich among a bunch of Rottweilers. We citizens will rise up, and we will crush them like a bug. And I can tell you right now, if the government, the government's all what they want to do now. When they bought these targets, we had on uh, on Thursday, I don't know if you listened to that show, but on Thursday, first hour, we had Carl Gallup's Homeland Security, their latest purchase is millions of targets with white people, didn't even pick Hispanic and black and others, because they want to cause a civil disruption. And pregnant, pregnant white women, women children in, gar- in, in, in playgrounds, yeah. elderly male man, white, white men, and these are targets for these billions of bullets they bought from various government departments. Now, you have to understand, they're not going to use these bullets or these targets. This is all BS. This is public consumption. They want this information out. They want to get people so pissed off they actually cause a civil disruption. What we need to do right now is ignore, impeach, and surround these guys, the wagons around them, and take them down. These senators and congressmen, we need to impeach Obama. He needs to have someone in the Secret Service zip tie the bugger, put a gun at the back of his head, march him down to a prison cell, and take him off in a paddy wagon to be put in prison for trial as a enemy of the state. We need to have all of these military officers and our senior military air force etc when they're talking about sequester they're not going to do a reasonable sequester they're not going to bring back troops from afghanistan they're going to fire military officers around the world they're going to pull back from operations that make us operationally unstable which is a come on to say to the middle eastern countries go ahead and attack israel well let me tell you you attack israel they're the third nuclear power in terms of total power in terms of nuclear throw weight, but they're the first nuclear power in terms of actually taking care of business. Not America, not Russia, not Japan, it's Israel. And if you screw with Israel, you go and kiss your ass goodbye. Okay? So every Muslim from Morocco to Indonesia might as well, if they're near any big city or town, better be ready to visit Allah because the secretary arranging appointments for Jesus Christ and God and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob exists in Jerusalem. And when the Israelis feel that they're absolutely going to be annihilated by these Muslim countries, they're going to push the Samson option, and it's over. Not just for Israel, but the whole world. Well, yeah, That's what's I going mean, to happen. Uh, and I, I think that Obama is going to be impeached by 2014 once we remove these damned Democrats in the Senate. We're going to, we, we should start impeachment proceedings now in the Congress. We should not allow the debt signal to go up. We should take over the banks, put Klaus Stiegel in. We should start countervailing tariffs against China. We should close these so-called uh, trade zones with imminent domain by the damn communist Chinese. We should kick all these communist Chinese students out of our country. We should make sure we close the border to cross-border traffic of trucks bringing in any damn thing they want, including nuclear materials, weapons, guillotines, God knows what they're bringing across, or bringing us through Hutchinson Wampoa that runs the not only via Cardenas in Mexico, but also Long Beach, California, where they're arming the gangs in America. The Chinese are making the weapons to arm our gangs to take over a population, and we are cooperating to hand over American military and medical operations to the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and Obama is fully cooperating. This is obscene. It's a takeover. It's a coup from the inside. And my, our generals, if you're listening, you need to start organizing yourselves to kind of do biz, take care of business. And you know what I mean. I don't need to fill in the blanks here. You guys, this year, if you don't do it, 
the Chinese are freaking out because they know that trillions of dollars that they bought in Treasury notes so they can dump all their products on us and take over now as number one manufacturer. They are freaked out, the extreme communists, because they know if the economy collapses more in China because they generate 10 new employees that can be employed highly educated for every job and the people now want a decent wage. The communist Chinese are more likely to have a revolution than Saudi Arabia, Yemen or any other country. China is on the knife's edge for an internal explosion and as the economy tanks, bye-bye communist China. They're going to have an internal revolution. Well, Mexico is turning into the new Syria. Very soon it's going to turn into a, a civil war. So you're going to well, it'll, it'll only go so far until the citizens rise up and get to armed to the teeth, and then that reality. Yeah, it'll only go so far until the citizens get rise up and get their own uh, civilian weapons. Uh, no, the government had not, no intentions of attacking the Americans. What? It's not working that way. It's uh, this is the third president where the El Chapo Guzman uh, has all power over all organized crime in Mexico, uh, aside from the Zetas. The uh -huh. Zetas have allied, uh, aligned themselves with the Muslims. Now we have a narco-jihad here in Mexico. And it's worse than Chechen, uh, Chechnya, it's worse than Rwanda, it's worse than Afghanistan. Mexico right now is turning well, into a new... Uh, uh, I, we had on the uh, so, show a few years ago, we had a, a gunsmith uh, organization out of Montana. Um, what I tell people to do is get a hold of gunsmiths here in America, ship over parts of guns, because you can actually do that to Mexico, not full guns. Parts of guns that can be assembled down there, the Mexican people are very smart, have them assemble their own guns and machines so they can actually make their own bullets. Uh, once you arm the Mexicans, they will set up their own civilian militia under the local sheriffs, and they'll kick out these drug lords and stop the federal government from allowing the constant drug trade of trillions of dollars of money. They're heading to U.S. banks for laundering. That's what needs to happen. We need gunsmiths in America to ship parts of guns to the United to, to Mexico to civilians that will work with the local sheriffs. So we have a proper chain of command, not criminals, not maniacs who are going to shoot at border control agents like the so-called Fast and Furious. Not we need to have a system where civilians have guns to protect themselves and their communities from craziness. If the if the government won't, we need to help them. It's much more complex than that. Right now, we just had. Uh a uh, 13-year-old who was uh, accused of killing more than 10 people. Uh, he was targeted. He was eliminated this week in Zacatecas, uh, w along with the uh, other five people. We have uh, uh, children that are killing uh, here in Mexico now. And uh, the situation is getting very, very bad, uh, dire. In and the government is already getting ready to suppress the people that are taking up arms uh, to protect their own communities. The government is ready to... Uh, yeah, but like anything, like a, how much pain you need before you finally do what you have to do. If you know you're going to mow, if you're going to know you're going to die, and she rise up, and you're going to resist. Better to die in battle with your die in a prison, starving and eaten with rats. Well, that's why the that's why Homeland Security has all the bullets because once you don't have they don't have all the bullets. They wish they did. Fire back. It's wishful thinking. America has lots of bullets and lots of guns, and we have lots of, I'm posting up unconventional weapons, and I'm going to post up so people can build them themselves, a hell of a lot more dangerous than guns. Armor piercing, mind control, infrasonic, and other weapon systems that you can make yourself with your own material. I have to give you all the details, but let me tell you, they don't want to take on the public. They want to wait until we eat each other and after six months mop up. They have no intentions of confronting us. None. None. Thanks for coming on the program. Amazing program today with Ann.